We're going to quickly run through the procedure to create a wing for an aircraft. Start off by getting your airfoil file into an Excel spreadsheet. Important thing here is the airfoil dat file sort of downloaded off the internet would typically be in column D E and that is what you get. As soon as you bring it into Excel, you must insert three blank columns. Fill in column F with zeros because this is X, this is Y, and this is Z. You then put in the width or cord of the airfoil. In this instance, it's 250 millimeters. And then you multiply all of column D by 250 to get column A. And you do the same with B and you do the same with C. This then is an airfoil shape that has got a cord of 250. So for example, if I were to change this to 400, you notice all of these dimensions have changed, or these points. So let's save this file, save as, and we'll call this 64212.5 root. And then we want a tip, which is smaller, so we'll make this 200. And file save as 64212.5 tip. Save. Okay, now that that's done, we can close Excel and open up Solid Edge. In Solid Edge, what you want to do is put this into ordered mode and show the reference planes. The first thing you'd like to do, go into surfacing and select curve by table. You're asked to browse for a table, so we'll browse to the airfoil file. And there we see the 64212.5 route, which we then open. And the airfoil shape that has been scaled is placed at the origin of the X, Y, Z coordinates. We finish that. Now we want to place the tip airfoil. So we select a new coordinate system, keyed in relative. You notice now that the Z axis is up. So on Z, we want to put this one, one, two, three millimeters away from the origin. If we preview and zoom in to get the entire screen, there's the new coordinate system. We then repeat the process by saying curve by table, browse, and in this instance we'll get the tip airfoil, which is thinner or narrow in cord. We say OK. And this time we go and select this, the parameter step, and we say we want to locate it at the new coordinate system. It's then located over there. Okay, once you've got the two airfoil shapes, your root and your tip, you want to join them together. So you create a blue surface between this. You want to create a blue surface from that to that shape. And there we have our airfoil. If we preview it and finish, you've now got your airfoil surface going from root to tip you'll notice there's no sweep on the leading edge because we kept the exit the same position so the sweep is on the trailing edge what you want to do now is go and give some thickness so you add material by thickening up this surface and you'll give it a thickness of two millimeters and you can select the direction, so we're going to say outwards. It can't do that, so what we're going to do is thicken it inwards. We can't do that either. So we'll try and change the step thickness to 0.5. Um, that should do the trick. There we've got our thickened surface of half a millimeter. What we need to do now is close off these ends. So 
So once again in surfacing, you go and get a bounded surface from there to there. And you say OK, and preview it. Here's your bounded surface. We'd also like to thicken that up. So you go and say add, thicken, select that. Um, we want 0.5 again. And the distance, we want to put it inwards. And there we've got that. Now we go to the other side to close this off. We go to surfacing, bounded surface between there and there. And we say preview. Have a look at it. And then we need to go back here. And we need to thicken that as well. So we thicken this. We've got 0.5 and we want it to go inwards. And there's our wing. All finished with the right airfoil profile. What you could now do is take this, it's a bit long, but you could take it into a CNC system. So we'll just stop.